It's heavy crane time and it's a 400 tonner six axle. Yes, it is the Tadano ATF 400G6. And this is a limited edition by WSI Models. The box is big and heavy, so we know this is a big crane. And inside there's a large pair of expanded polystyrene trays. And there's a manual we will look at shortly. It's always nice when top and bottom is marked, it saves such a mess later. So with the box the right way up, we can cut the factory seal. And when we lift the lid, we see lots of blue and yellow, which is not just the Swedish flag colours, but it's also the colours of Havator. And that company operates in the Nordic area. Here's the manual, and it's very good, and the only thing missing is a reaving diagram for the big hook. We're going to rig this crane for heavy lifting, so that means fitting the optional power system. And that begins by connecting in at the top of the boom. To make life easier, it's good to use a screwdriver to make sure the holes are lined up. And then that makes getting in the pin oh so much easier. The next connection uses a screw, and we have to connect in the end of the hydraulic ram that raises up the power system. The screw goes in easily, and it's nice, simple assembly. We have to unfold and connect up the end of the pendant bars, and you need to handle the pendant bars carefully. You make the connection with tiny brass nuts and bolts, and because no one's got fingers that small, two tools are provided. Once the nut's on the end of the bolt, we can use a device called a thumb, and that helps us to do the final tightening up. Next, we need to run some rope from the winch drum, and a key is provided to turn the winch drum, although in reality it's quite loose. And the sticky tape on the drum is really sticky and so you can be sure that it annoys you as you try and get the important work done. Here we've reaved on the intermediate hook and we can attach it to the loop at the front for transport. To cover the access to the winch drum, we can add a nice detailed exhaust box. And as we're in transport mode, we can add the folded version of the handrails. It is highly detailed underneath with a ladder at the front and between the metal suspension and transmission components you can see the engine and gearbox and it all looks really good and the tyres have a nice tread pattern too. The high detail continues through to the rear end and there are nice soft mud flaps also and if we start at the boom head there are nice metal pulleys and the intermediate metal hook looks good also. The cab looks great in the yellow and blue colour scheme and there's lots of tiny highlighting and details. The wheels are particularly nice with different hubs on the driven axles, and it always looks interesting when there's branding on the tyre walls. Another very nice detail is the large cable spooling drum, and there are lights and access steps. The graphics are a high point and the Havator name looks great, and there are small warning graphics too. At the back there's a nice equipment box and the lights have lenses and there's also a realistic number plate. Up on top there's excellent walkway surfaces and a nice etched exhaust box with no step written on it. There's also more excellent grills and surfaces behind the carrier cab. And the outrigger beams are nicely shaped and detailed. And also included with the model are four large metal spreader plates. The large counterweight blocks are nicely cast. And the luffing winch is already reeved out of the box. Other details include small ladders. The power system has got some cast in hydraulic pipe details. And the pulleys used are metal. The decoration of the model is excellent, including Havator on each of the telescopic sections. Here are the two other hooks that you get, and there's a single line hook, and it's nice that the hook rotates. And there's also a large heavy hook block for the big lifts. This is also nice because the hook moves fully, so there's no problem standing the block up properly, and it even includes spring-loaded safety catches. The first thing we can do if we've got suitable heavy haulage is to form a nice display convoy. 
but out of the display case and into the workshop and we see that the carrier has got linked steering at the front with the first three axles linked together and the rear three axles are also a linked group. So you can replicate many of the steering modes of the real crane but maybe separate axles would have been more flexible. There is some suspension on the axles and it's very stiff and if you try driving the crane along as you do then it rolls well in a straight line. At this point we normally check the steering as well, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We've set the linked groups and that allows the crane to turn through a fairly shallow curve. Ok enough driving, we want lifting. And to do that we need to set the crane up, so the first job is to pull out the outriggers. And then wind down the pads which reveal nice smooth pistons. Incoming is the first of the spreader plates. And it's always good when the whole model can be supported wheels free. It is boom up time but we do have the power system mounted. So the first thing we'll do is pump the hydraulics and raise up the power system. And just to say that in real life this is not done using a giant hand. Let's not forget to swap out the handrails for raised ones because we're in working mode. And let's not forget to disconnect the hook at the front or we will create an embarrassing scene. So we're finally ready to raise the boom, and that's super smooth because it has a metal jacket, and to get it to hold a pose you use an allen key on a tiny grub screw. This is a nice positive system and it always works well. Extending the boom with a power system attached is a bit more fiddly, and that's because you have to keep unwinching the power system drum. The telescopic sections are nice because they have locks at 46%, 92% and 100% and rotation of the crane was reasonably smooth on the review model. We need some counterweight so you can place the first piece on the carrier deck and then slings are included with the model for lifting the counterweight blocks. So you can carefully hook them onto the slings and that then gives you a very interesting way to pose the model. But if we want to mount the counterweight on the crane we have to use the big hand and we need to offer it up to the crane and it hooks in and we then pin it with a couple of pins. It's all a tight fit so you might need to use a screwdriver to line the holes up to get the pins in. But once it's all connected up you can then load up the counterweight blocks. This is a beautiful looking model of the Tadano ATF 400G6 and the Havator colour scheme is a popular limited edition. The model itself has that great blend of high detail coupled with very good functionality. So it looks great and overall it is excellent. Mm -hmm. 